In this video, we're going to look at osmosis and diffusion. Let's start off with diffusion. We have some particles sitting here. Let's say it's a petrol spill on the floor of our local service station. We sit there beside them, and in a very short time, suddenly we notice the smell of the petrol. This is because the particles have been spreading out. We put no energy into this, so it is called passive. A definition of diffusion would be the passive movement of particles from regions of high concentration to regions of low concentration. Now this is not quite right, it's all relative. So regions of higher concentration to regions of lower concentration. We call it passive. We don't add energy for the particles to spread out. This occurs in all fluids, whether it's a liquid or whether it's in a gas. Now, osmosis is a special case of diffusion that only involves water. There are really three key points in the definition for osmosis. These are, it's the diffusion of water from where there is lots to where there is less across a semi-permeable membrane. The big question really is, how can we have lots and less water? And the answer to this question is to dilute the water with what I call dissolved substances. Now let's draw a diagram of this to explain. Here we have a badly drawn cell, my specialty. Within our badly drawn cell, we have what are called aquaporins. They'll go all the way around. However, I'm not going to draw them everywhere. Now, the aquaporin is a protein with a hole in it to allow water to go through. So let's draw one on the other side. So this is an aquaporin, which is really a protein to allow water in and out of the cell. Put our cell into pure water. I'm just going to draw one side, our water particles. Inside our cell we have some water particles, but we also have some glucose molecules, which cannot fit through the aquaporins. And again, yes, there'd be more stuff over the other side of the cell, but we're just looking at this region here for now. You can pretty quickly see there is lots of water on the outside, there is less water on the inside of our cell, so we're going to get the passive movement, we don't need to add any energy at all, of water particles from where there is lots to where there is less, or we could say some of the water particles will move in through the aquaporins to enter the cell. We can do various investigations of this and we'll quickly see things like our cells become heavier if we leave them soaking in pure water. The reverse happens when we dilute the outside with a solute. If we were to take this example and just wind it back a little bit, take out a few water molecules here, let's add a lot more glucose molecules. Now when we look at this, we can quickly see that there is more water here. There is less water here because it's been diluted further by our glucose. So our water moves from where there is more to less, or in this case, some of the water molecules will move out of the aquaporins, meaning this time we'll lose mass. It will become lighter. So we can measure cells in different concentrations of a solution and use the change in mass as evidence to deduce what osmosis is taking place. Finally, we need to tidy up our definition. We can't really be talking as we did at the start with where there is lots to where there is less. We can make a good definition that will hold up. There's a fusion of water from regions where there is a high water potential to regions where there is a lower water potential. Yes, again, it's relative, so that should be higher. Water diffuses passively from where there is lots to less, high water potential to low water potential, across a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable means it has 
small holes. Whatever you do, do not use the word water concentration. Water concentration does not exist.